Well, hey, y'all. Welcome to the GI Justin channel. Thank you for checking back in with me. I appreciate you guys watching the channel. You know, I've told you over the last couple of weeks that there are several topics that I'm going to continue to keep an eye on. And I think this one is worth touching back in on because this is probably one of the most important things we've dealt with in, in at least my lifetime. And that is basically that the U.S. government could possibly be weeks away from being completely incapable of paying their bills and managing their finances. So, you know, we did a video and I'll link it up here in the very top, right up here in the very beginning of the, uh, of the episode that we're going to talk about today is, is we'll take a look back at this, at how we got to where we are with this debt ceiling. And you can go back and watch that video if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Um, the big news right now is that, you know, they're, they're talking about what the ramifications are going to be of a failure to come to an agreement on this. So one of the biggest things we talked about in that last video is that on estimate 500,000 Americans per week will lose their job if this isn't handled because American companies just can't manage to survive with all of these issues that are going to be created from the failure to, to pay the bills. So some of the ramifications of this debt ceiling standoff that, that are going to really, really affect the American people is they may decrease payments uh, basically from the federal government like Social Security, tax refunds, military paychecks, um, you know, Medicare. All of these things could end up being delayed because if that happens, the government has to go into crisis mode and figure out which payments they're going to make. They're going to put in an order of priority where the most important bills get paid first, basically, you know, just like you would at your house if you were having problems. You know, electricity and water, pretty stinking important. Cable television, maybe not so much. And that could relate in this situation as well. Um, so basically, a senior economist from Wells Fargo says that someone is going to get shortchanged regardless of, of how this plays out. That if they don't come to an agreement, someone is not going to be to be given the allotments that they they deserve. And there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to this debt ceiling problem. Like how long will the delay be and how is the government going to prioritize these these issues that it sees? Um, you know, and, and to drill back down into kind of the beginnings of all this, basically we're in this situation of standoff between Republicans and Democrats tied to the amount of money the US, U.S. is authorized to pay our bills. Because since we operate at a deficit where we spend more than we make, we basically have to borrow money to make up the balance. And that's basically what this is. That, that's what this, this debt limit is known as, is the amount of money they're allowed to borrow against. Um, periodically, over, over the course of our country, Congress has had to raise or suspend the debt ceiling to avoid the default on the national debt. And basically, our debt ceiling as it stands right now is about $31.4 trillion, and they need more money to continue to pay our bills. And if they don't come to an agreement, then there is no ceiling and they default on all these issues, which could happen as early as June 1st, depending on how it all goes. So if the government reaches this date without a deal, it would be the first time in U.S. history that the federal government has intentionally not agreed to all the financial promises that it deals with. So then that's where this hypothesis of who's going to get paid and how are they going to get paid comes into play first, where, like I said, the government's going to have to prioritize what it is going to pay first. Most likely, more than anything, above Social Security, Medicare, military paychecks, which of course is very important to me, based on my time with the military and, and all my friends who are still in the military that rely on these paychecks. You know, um, it appears that the most important and likely thing the government's going to pay is United States government treasury bonds. Probably the first thing they pay off, and the biggest reason for that would be in this technical default that we would be looking at, um, more than anything, treasury bonds are the foundation of the entire capital structure of, of the world. Um, these missed bond payments would basically trigger a financial Armageddon because the world sees United States treasury bonds, which currently about $24 trillion worth of them exist as the largest and deepest bond market in the entire world. And there are tons of 
global investors from foreign banks, American banks, retirement funds, mutual funds, who all own these bonds because they basically see it as a risk-free asset. It's the United. It's backed by the the full faith and power of the, of the U.S. government. And what happens when the government decides, yeah, I don't, you know, we got bills to pay, we can't do this right now. What could happen? Investors may panic, dumping the bonds off for whatever they can get for them, triggering basically a meltdown across the spectrum between our bond market and our stock market, tanking the U.S. economy, basically, because all these people are going to be fighting for whatever money they can get. And that's the problem, is if it starts triggering these massive sell-offs, how far does it go before it stops? Like I said in the video, we could see up to 45% decrease in the American stock market. 45%, half its value, gone. That would be crippling to the United States. So the other big part of this is the agencies who rate credit. Just like you know, when you and I have credit scores, nations have a credit rating. And if the U.S. credit rating is downgraded, government borrowing costs would increase. And as a result, they would pass those on to us through mortgage rates, uh, you know, different debt markets, credit cards, loans that are linked to the U.S. Treasury market. So the, you know, that would be a big, big problem. We talked about that in the other video as well. And basically bondholders would be, would be put second. And that's the big question mark is what is going to be the order of priority for the government if they don't come to this agreement? Because all federal debt will be, will be on the table as something worth discussing. You know, they're going to have to look at, like I said, everything and determine, okay, got to pay the water and the gas. So we're going to pay, you know, defense spending, uh, Cable, eh, we may not need cable and internet, so let's not pay Social Security and Medicare. And you've got people relying on this money to pay their medical bills to survive on. And again, most likely the scariest one of those would be Social Security and money for healthcare programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and you know the, the Affordable Care Act um, health plans where basically uh, none of these programs are going to be funded. So how how are they going to put out money? And what are people going to do that are on fixed incomes that need it? Deferring payments uh, basically means that healthcare providers may delay the ability to enroll in healthcare. You know, where you get these insurance companies that only enroll if you get a new job or periodic open enrollment, they may just decide to cancel that because they're not footing the bill. So You'll get, you know, that and these retirees who are on fixed income that will have trouble paying their bills and won't be able to to make ends meet because the government can't get its you know what together. And again, some of these other payments that I was looking at that could be affected. If you haven't gotten your federal income tax refund yet, you may not get that. Um, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP, also known as food stamps, would be a program that would suffer. So you're looking at all of the people in America who need our help the most being the first ones to suffer. And government retirement plans, educational plans like Pell Grants, federal salaries through the, you know, the military, veterans benefits, contractors, all of these different groups of people are going to suffer because the government can't figure out how to fund itself. And it's basically uncharted territory. It's a universe that our government has never in, in its entire history been in. And I think the big answer here, too, is if they don't come to an agreement, we have to hold them accountable. And how do we do that? We do that at the ballot box. And if they can't come to an agreement and put a plan together on how to save our government and figure this stuff out, that is the answer, in my opinion. You know, I talked about that in the last video. I said, what's the answer? I'm not entirely sure. I think the answer is have to hold the political structure accountable. If they can't figure out a way to come to agreements to better the United States. So I think that's the big, the big part there. So I, I'm hopeful they're going to do that. I think they may make some end roads. I think it's a lot of political posturing, which is unfortunate that regular people have to concern themselves and worry about this posturing. But I think that's the path forward is we, instead of voting red, blue, or otherwise, have to begin to vote for people who value America more than their political careers. And there are politicians like that out there without a doubt. One that I highly recommend who does an amazing job of breaking down situations ongoing in America, if you don't currently follow him, Dan Crenshaw. Uh, he is a Republican congressman from Texas, 
and he does an amazing job of kind of doing similar to what I do on on the channel. He's got a podcast, uh, former Navy SEAL, injured in combat, does a very good job of explaining things and having on guests on his show who can explain things in the right ways. So Dan Crenshaw is a great person to follow. If you're also looking for more information, kind of like what I give you, he does an awesome job, not to mention an amazing patriot who cares a ton for America and has given so, so much for the country. So I think that's the key is finding people like him that care more about America than politics. So thank you guys so much for watching the channel and subscribing in a moment. If it hasn't already happened, there's going to be a little circle right there. It's going to have a, a helicopter and a bunch of military looking people laying on the ground with weapons in front of them. That's actually me flying in Afghanistan. Promise I will tell the story. That is also the subscribe button. So if you haven't done that already, pop that thing and subscribe to the channel so you can keep getting updates on important stories like this from me. Um, thank you guys so much for your comments. I love those too. It's so much fun talking with you guys about the, the things that are facing our world today. So I hope you guys had an awesome Mother's Day. Took care of your moms or you were taken care of and have an awesome week.